According to Sack Wiki, the Victorinox Walker is a remake of the discontinued Lumberjack. The Walker's simple two-layer design and compact 84mm length make it a very pocketable model for those looking for a minimalist package. The Walker has a traditional Victorinox tweezers and toothpick. The combi opener clicks nicely into a halfway position and into an extended position. This is the smallest Victorinox with a saw blade. It has a slight protrusion to make it easier to open. Always a compromise. Let's see how the small saw compares to a full-size bow saw. I'm cutting dry, dense hardwood. A real test. Not unexpectedly, the walker is much slower, but certainly capable of dealing with kindling. The combi opener is clever in that it combines the abilities of what are typically two opening tools on many Swiss Army knives. A good bottle opener, a workable can opener, two position screwdriver, and a small wire stripper. Finally, let's look at the blade. From the factory, this is a usable blade, but with some simple stropping, it becomes a good blade. Most pocket knives have between a 15 and 20 degree bevel on each cutting edge. Let's set up a simple jig to set the angle for stropping the cutting edge. An old Boy Scout method is a simple two penny jig that raises the back of the blade by a little over three millimeters. Why does this two penny jig work? Some machine shop mathematics explains why. I measure B, the width of the blade, to be 12 millimeters. The width C of the two pennies is about 3.04 millimeters. Using a calculator, the inverse sign of C divided by B is about 15 degrees. Therefore, when the back of the blade is raised by the two pennies, it is being held by about 15 degrees. Now, if this was a two-bladed Swiss Army knife, I would find the width of the small blade of the knife to be about 9 millimeters. And using that same two penny jig, that angle would then be about 20 degrees. Victorinox, like many other manufacturers, recommends that the blade be held between 15 to 20 degrees to the surface of the abrasive. The stropping surface is made by gluing leather to a flat length of wood. I happen to be using the smooth side of the leather although either side can be used giving slightly different results. Next I apply some stropping compound having a 5 to 7 micron grit. I use the two pennies to set the angle and assure the edge is in contact with the stropping surface. I apply very light even pressure and sweep the blade across the entire stropping surface. I make several passes and change to the other side of the blade. The process is repeated for around a minute or so. The blade should slice the paper easily and consistently along the full length of the blade without tearing or dragging. Keep that strop handy. It may be all you need to maintain your blade. As it is often said, the best knife is the one you have with you. The 84mm length allows a knife to disappear in the pocket when compared to the typical 91mm knife. Let's next look at adapting the knife to better serve as a backup fire starting system. Fire triangle tells us an oxidizing agent, usually oxygen, a heat source and a fuel source are needed for fire. Ferrocerium is an alloy composed of iron and mishmetal, which has a large amount of cerium. When ferrocerium is shaved with sufficient force, the shavings ignite to create a brief, intense source of heat. This heat, however, needs a longer lasting fuel source to create a sustainable fire. Drawing a length of jute twine several times through some beeswax will make the twine longer burning as well as make it more manageable for twisting together. I'm using 550 paracord, but the paracord strands are replaced with waxed jute strands.
a 2.38 millimeter or 3.30 seconds inch diameter ferrocerium rod can be inserted into common 550 paracord. This is a very small diameter, so this ferrocerium rod is probably best considered an emergency fire starter. I'd probably not plan on more than five fires with a rod of this size. Sealing both ends of the paracord to keep the materials in place. Though any knot can be used, I'm using a two half hitch variant to contain the extra length of the paracord and because it's relatively easy to untie. This completes a simple fire starter, lanyard, or fob. Unraveling the jute into fine fibers will greatly improve the likelihood of ignition from the ferrocerium rod. One of the best ferrocerium striking tools on a Swiss Army knife is the back edge of the saw blade. As can be seen, the fire starter meets the fire triangle heat and fuel requirements, but having a longer lasting fuel source will make this a much better fire starting system. Let's look at making a wax cotton knife pouch that can also serve as an emergency fuel source for fire starting. I'm recycling the remnants of some old denim jeans. Though I'm using heavy denim here, lighter weight natural fabrics can certainly be used. After trimming, I will also recycle the leather belt patch into a mini straw. Sewing what will be the closed end of the knife pouch. The pouch is made a little bit longer than needed with the expectation it can be trimmed to size. Though the cotton fabric will burn, waxing the cotton both waterproofs it and makes it essentially a giant candle wick, so I consider the pouch to be an expendable fire tinder. I use a combination of beeswax and recycled wax, or paraffin candle pieces. These are carefully melted using a low heat. Once the wax sets, I apply some heat causing the wax to further saturate the cotton. This will typically make the pouch more pliable too. Cutting a section from the wax cotton to create a fuel source. When used as tinder with the wax jute, the finer jute immediately ignites and the waxed cotton then sustains a flame creating more heat and time to get a fire going even in wet conditions. This is a simple low cost project. Give it a try. Improve upon it. Remember to adapt, make, and be resilient.